give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Come on, all give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in our mouth. Our soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come on, don't let me magnify him by myself. Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're so glad you tuned in uh, to this life-lifting uh, service, this worship experience from Bethel AME Church. We also want to thank God and commemorate the sacrifices of those who paid the ultimate sacrifice to protect this country. To God be the glory for their lives that they may certainly have already received their heavenly reward. Amen. We're going to continue to worship God. We're going to be led in our invocation uh, by the Reverend William Anderson and followed by a scripture lesson uh, by the Reverend Haroline Shackelford. Let's have an awesome service. Amen. morning. Good morning, everyone. Father, Lord, God, Holy One, we come to thee this morning, knowing that thou art sitting in heaven, that thou hast watched over us and kept us all through the week, yes. and gave us the, the, the fortitude, the, the will to come to just worship you one more time, oh, Father yes. God. As we come into your house, we come with a, a feeling of love and, yes. and, and just gratitude for all that you are, Father God. But throughout all of creation, so much is going on and just steered by your hand. But yet you have stayed by us day by day, minute by minute, hour by hour, well, Father God, year by year. You have given us a, a way to go, a way to see, a way to know, oh, yes. Father God. All we have to do is just consult you, Father yes, God. Lord. You have branded our wishes. Our, you have uh, washed away our fears, yes, O oh, Father yes, God. You have yes. healed our sickness and our illness, O oh, Father God. Yes, yes. And through all of that, you have said one great thing. Yes. I love you. <laughs> I love you, my creation. Yes, 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 you loved yes. us so much, you gave your only son, your only begotten son, that he marched up to Calvary, O oh, Father God. He was driven and whipped, oh, Father God. He was had hair pulled out, oh, Father God. But yet, he died willingly, oh, Father God, on the cross. He could have called angels to come and rescue him, but yet he knew that the only way that we would be saved was if he died. So thank you for his sacrifice, Father God. And thank you for your word, for your word never changes. It always is, oh, Father God. We can depend upon your word no matter what. Yes. So in times of crisis, in times of fear, in times of bewilderment, yes. we turn to you, to your word, yes. and say, Lord, you have the answer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you are, for all that you're going to be to all of us. Yes. And we just wish that someone would hear this broadcast and come to Christ yes. and accept yes. Jesus as Savior. That is our greatest wish. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray and let the church say amen. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is found in the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, and I will be reading the first through the eighth verses, and I will be reading the message version. And it reads thusly. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the master sitting on a throne, high, exalted, and the train of his robes filled the temple. Angel seraphs hovered above him, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two their feet, and with two they flew. And they called back and forth one to the other, Holy, holy, holy is God of the angel armies. 
His bright glory fills the whole earth. The foundations trembled at the sound of the angel voices. And then the whole house filled with smoke. I said, doom, it's doomsday. I'm as good as dead. Every word I've ever spoken is tainted, blasphemous even. And the people I live with talk the same way, using words that corrupt and desecrate. And here I've looked God in the face, the king, God of the angel armies. Then one of the angel seraphs flew to me. He held a live coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with the coal and said, look, this coal has touched your lips, gone your guilt, your sins wiped out. And then I heard the voice of the master, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? I spoke up, I'll go, send me. May God bless the hearers and the readers of his word, may we live it as we walk the path of life. Right 
to God the Lord sometimes you just need to testify to yourself and say the Lord is blessing me right now can you give God a praise if you know that the Lord is blessing you I don't know what you're going through but the Lord is in the blessing business and he's not blessing you sometime in the future he's blessing you right now didn't they tell you what did he do he woke you up on a rainy day this morning and started you on your way. You ought to give God a praise because he's blessing you even right now. Any day above ground is a good day. And we praise, we praise, and 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 we praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Uh, that is a, a foretaste of the glory uh, of the male chorus. Amen. The male chorus representing on the fifth Sunday. And we thank God. We're looking forward uh, as we, uh, after a while, worship in person. We're going to see members of the male course doing their usual thing. It's offering time. All right. You said the Lord is blessing you right now. Come on and bless him back. The Lord is blessing us to be a blessing. And we thank God for the privilege. How many know it's a privilege to be able to invest in the kingdom of God? And we thank God. He says, don't lay up treasures uh, uh, on earth where Martha Russ will get it. If you leave out of here, you ain't going to take nothing with you. He said, lay up your treasures in heaven. Build your hopes on things eternal, and God will bless you. It's offering time. Amen. There are several ways you can invest into the kingdom of God through the vehicle of Bethel AME Church. You've been so kind in the past. Go to our church website, B-E-T-H-E-L-H. AME.com, B E T H E L H, AME.com, and you can click on the donation tab. Also, you can mail it into the church, 2521 North Armistead Avenue in Hampton, Virginia, 23666, 2521 North Armistead Avenue, Hampton, Virginia, 23666, and we'll be glad uh, to receive your offering that way, or you can come by the church during the week, or you can bring it by the day before about 11 o'clock or so, and we'll be glad to receive your gifts. We thank you for that. We thank God also, uh, the, um, the sister Candace Owens, uh, she uh, said that the church was so kind uh, to her in the passing of her parents, Charles and Cora uh, Owens, and she gave a very generous donation. I don't have permission to, uh, to lift it up, uh, but I wanna thank her for that, honoring your parents. We thank you for that, and we will always remember and love them. Let the church say amen. Thank you so much. A amen. And so we just thank God. Don't forget about your mortgage fund. Let's continue to do that uh, so that we can continue to enjoy this great and wonderful church. And we thank God on the fifth Sunday. Many of you, we've always given to the lay organization. And for those who usually give, please consider a gift to the lay organization. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have blessed us. You are blessing us right now. 
and uh, you wake us up every morning. We don't take it for granted. Some people take that for granted, but we don't, Lord. You are blessing us each and every day. Thank you, Lord, that you have granted us the privilege and put us in a position that we might bless you in spirit and in truth. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh that we might receive the blessing of your son, that you, if we give, you'll give it back to us. Press down, shaking together, and come on, running over shall men give to our bosom. We thank you for that, Lord, as you bless your people. And the church of the living God said amen and amen, amen. Certainly want to welcome everyone today, and certainly we are thankful for every day is a day of thanksgiving, but we give thanks as we commemorate uh, the lives of those who pay the ultimate sacrifice uh, in wars, uh, some in accidents, doing military operations and the like. We thank God that they paid the price so that we might have the freedoms we enjoy. And so I know many of you will be going to various uh, cemeteries and you'll be uh, commemorating in your own way. And many of us will be watching the, uh, the tomb of an unknown soldier there tomorrow as the president lays the wreath. Let's never forget uh, for those who paid that ultimate sacrifice. And we thank God for you and your loved ones. Sister uh, Avis Manley gave a tremendous testimony about her brother uh, who uh, paid the price in the Vietnam War, and that was 1967. And she still remembers, she still has fond memories of her brother. There are many testimonies like Sister Manley. Let's keep uh, our brothers and sisters encouraged. Let the church say amen. Uh, certainly, a Tuesday night conference call, a Zoom uh, meeting, we're looking forward to that. Wednesday Bible study, 1145, 645. And then um, we're gonna send out the email, but June the 11th and 12th, uh, the Portsmouth Richmond Roanoke District led by our elder Reverend Dr. Samuel E. Haywood III. We're gonna have our Sunday school, our church school and Christian education uh, convocation. And so everyone is invited. We'll send out the link. You gotta register to fully participate, to participate fully. So please, when that's sent out, please, uh, you know, please join in uh, because you, you, you wanna be a part of that. So June the 11th and 12th, it starts Friday evening and it goes to a good portion of Saturday. So we're looking forward to a great, great and wonderful time uh, in the Lord. We're having a vacation Bible school. Amen. Vacation Bible school. It's going to be June the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. June the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Virtually, virtually from 630 to 8 o'clock. Uh, so we want you to hold those dates. We'll get out the information about how you can hook this up. And so we give God the praise. It's going to be fantastic. And uh, the theme is, I got this with Jesus. Now, I like that. In fact, I, man, I, every preacher can work with that. I got this with Jesus. Amen. We want to encourage you, as we always do, get your COVID-19 shot. Get your shot. Amen. Now, not just for you, but it's also for those that you love. It's not just you may never come down with any serious symptoms, but I stopped by here to tell you. Thank you, team. I stopped by to tell you. Uh, that, you know, if we worship together and all that, only 48% of Virginians are fully vaccinated. Come on, y'all. So that means that you really want to be careful. You want to be careful. Even here in the studio here, we're wearing our masks. Even though all of us have been vaccinated, we still love one another enough to try to do the best that we can to protect one another. Somebody ought to say amen. We're looking forward to in-person worship in the near future. And the more people that are vaccinated, the safer it'll be, be in, our, in our gatherings. We thank God that uh, uh, we celebrate the graduation of one of our wonderful young adults. Uh, it seemed like yesterday he gave his high school graduation speech. Calvin Evans graduating from Norfolk State University. Amen. Recently graduated with honors. Amen. And we thank God for you, Calvin. The best is yet to come. And uh, behold the green and gold. Amen. You know I had to get that in. I hear you, Reverend Shackleford. Amen. But she got her blue on. She got her blue on. So she's always represented. But we're proud of you, Calvin. And we look forward to uh, celebrating our high school graduates in the very near future. And so we're looking forward to that. They'll have a time where they can uh, give their, their speeches, uh, Yasmin Wilson and Daron Robertson Jr. and uh, Layla Hill, uh, uh, Layla Nicole Hill. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, celebrating them. Let the church say amen. 
uh, we uh, still want to uh, uh, lift up June the 15th, Sister Keisha Wilson. Amen. She's going to be doing her initial sermon at 7 o'clock uh, p.m. Amen. And so the 15th. So how you're looking at it now, that's usually our Zoom conference call night. We're not doing Zoom. How you're watching it now is how you'll watch her service, that service. And so we look forward to that uh, in the name of Jesus. Please keep Marcus Smith and the pastors of his mother in prayer. Valerie Watts, her husband's uh, home going service will be this Saturday. Uh, but it'll be for the family. And so please pray. Uh, those family members will be in attendance. Please pray for Sister Watts, Kenosha Sheldon Williams. They just celebrated their brother's home going yesterday. And Reverend McCormick, she's recuperating from service surgery. Joan Wilson, we're praying for you that we're looking forward to see you do the gospel slide. Amen. Joan Wilson doing the gospel slide. We look forward to seeing you. Amen. She's going to mess with me this week. Georgette Chapman, she's a miracle. She's a miracle. God has brought her back, and she's a walk. She's got a mighty testimony. Every day she's getting stronger, and all we got to do is say, to God be the glory. If you never saw a miracle, if you look at Georgette Chapman, you saw a miracle. Come on, let's give God a praise. He's still in the healing and restoration business. Amen. I want to ask Brother Wilson and company to give us another selection. God bless you all. Come on, gentlemen, stop by here. Stop by here for a little while. Just one touch from you will make my coming here worthwhile. Stop by here. It's so hard for me. Well, let's show the parts. Stop by here for a little while. Just one touch from you will make my coming here worthwhile. Stop by here for a little while. It's so hard of mine. Come on, brother Space. I stop by here for a little while. Just one touch from you will make my coming need worthwhile. I stop by here. Me, brother Spade. I stop by here for a little while. Just one touch from you will make my coming here worthwhile. I stop by here for a little while. I want you to touch the soul. Touch 
much from you. We'll make my coming here worthwhile. I stop by here for a little while. I want you to touch this old heart of mine. Stop by here for a little while. Just one touch from you. I made my coming here worthwhile. Stop by here for a little while. I want you to touch this old heart of mine. Stop by here for a little while. Just one touch from you will make my coming here worthwhile. Stop by here for a little while. I want you to touch this all heart of mine. I want you to touch this all heart of mine. Amen. We thank God that the male chorus, you know, sometimes you can sing your prayers. And that was a prayer that they sung, Lord, stop by here, manifest yourself where I am right here because we need you. Is there anybody that just wants to open up your heart and just say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I can't make it without you, Lord. And with, with you in my life, I think I'm be able to roll on just a little while longer. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And we thank God. We thank God. Amen. We're excited about God. We're excited about him. And we give God the glory. Amen. We uh, just wanted to again thank my media team, they're doing a great job every Sunday, making sure we can get it out, whether you're on the phone, uh, wherever you are, you can get this service. And uh, we're reaching beyond the walls. Many people listening that are not members of Bethel, thank you for sharing with us on today. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. Lord, I thank you, Lord, because you're everything. The God that we live and move and have our being. Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for you have anointed me. And because you have anointed me, Lord, let your glory fall in this place and in every place under the sound of my voice. Not only bless Bethel, but bless every church everywhere that you might be uh, glorified. We thank you for that, Lord. And I pray you touch somebody's heart that they might give their life and say, what must I do to be saved? We thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, y'all. Amen. God bless you. Isaiah, the sixth chapter, uh, verses one through eight, very familiar words. And I'm reading from the, the Good News Bible. Amen. Isaiah, the sixth chapter, one through eight. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was sitting on his throne, high and exalted, and his robe filled the whole temple. Round him flaming creatures were standing, each of which had six wings. Each creature covered its face with two wings and its body with two and used the other two for flying. They were calling out to each other, holy, holy, holy. The Lord Almighty is holy. His glory fills the world. And the sound of their voices made the foundation of the temple shake. And the temple itself was filled with smoke. And I said, there's no hope for me. I'm doomed because every word that passes my lips is sinful. And I live among a people whose every word is sinful. And yet with my own eyes, I have seen the king, the Lord Almighty. Then, then, then one of the creatures flew down to me, carrying a burning coal that he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. 
He touched my lips with the burning coal and said, this has touched your lips. And now your guilt is gone. Hallelujah. And your sins are forgiven. <laughs> and then, then, then I heard the Lord say, whom shall I send? Who, who will be our messenger? I answered, I will go. Send me. Beloved, if you pray with me for a few moments, if a sermon must have a theme, let this be it. A life-changing experience. A life-changing experience. One of the things that really makes life so interesting are the experiences that we have along the way. I can think of uh, some of the great experiences in my life, giving my life to Christ. Hallelujah. Graduation of some schools that I attended. Getting my first real jobs with benefits. Thank you, first lady shouting on that. Get married. Amen. Great experience. Fantastic. And seeing my children being born. Yes, I was in the room. And in fact, uh, it helped me to appreciate women all the more when you're in the birthing room. Praise the Lord. Because my wife said, if you help to make it, you ought to be there to help support me. Great, <laughs> great experiences. Uh, like seeing the children take their first steps and speaking their first word. Great experiences, travels I've taken. Wonderful experiences. And all of us have gone to restaurants. And you said, what a great experience that blew your mind. I submit to you today that God will allow us to experience some things that will change and can revolutionize your life. When I got saved, hallelujah, it revolutionized my life as a young boy. When I got called to preach, I thought I was really living, but when I got called to preach, it revolutionized my life. I've never been the same. And I pray in your life that God would do some things, that he would give you some experiences that will be life-changing experiences that the experiences will change you so much for the better that you will never forget what happened and what a difference it made in your life. In today's message, we are blessed to peek into the life uh, changing experience in Isaiah 6 and the great prophet Isaiah. Isaiah spoke these words which have echoed across the centuries. Uh, just about every Christian is familiar with Isaiah, the sixth chapter. Isaiah was in the temple, the temple, uh, and he uttered these words while he was in there one day. He said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. King Uzziah was a great king and served well. Fifty-two years, Israel had good standing under his leadership. And if you know about uh, the Israelite kings, you know, most of them were sorry. But he was a good king. Uh, uh, Isaiah was fond. He was, a, he was a priest in the temple. He was fond of the king and was in mourning. He marked the year to remember as a, the year that the king died. We have had things to happen to cause us, as we look at Memorial Day, to mark specific years that we never will forget. Everybody, if you've ever been in anybody's history class, will remember December 7th, 1941, the attack on Pearl Harbor. Everybody remembers soon, June 6th, 1944, D-Day, the attack at Normandy, marking the invasion of Europe. Everybody remembers September the 11th, uh, 2001, 911, the attack on the World Trade Center. January 6, 2021, no one will forget because we saw visual images of the attack and insurrection at the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. We will never forget, I don't care as long as you live, the year 2020 was the year of the worldwide pandemic. And I did, Isaiah said, I remember that, that year because it was because we were grieving, like all countries grieve over a king when he dies. I was grieving, and I was grieving over this king. He was a good king. Don't know what's coming. Don't know what kind of king we're going to have now. And God chose to show himself and reveal himself to me. Stop by to tell you, it's often in times when we find ourselves in moments of great trial that God will show himself mighty in the midst of it. Uh, in this pandemic, I'm sure that if I could hear you testify, you would say, 
in spite of all the hardship, God has shown himself mighty in your life. You, 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 you thought you really knew God, but God revealed himself to you in a way this last year that he never has before. He has supplied our need and taken care of us. He has made ways out of no ways. Even though we could not meet in person, I declare that God has made Bethel AME Church stronger than ever before. Can anybody say we are Bethel strong? Some of you have had days like Isaiah. You've had days of mourning and grief. We've lost many loved ones and friends, and you wondered how you would go on. We've lost loved ones who we just knew we could not go on without. Ah, but hallelujah, even in the midst of our hurt and pain, God revealed himself as a keeper and sustainer. Have I got a witness here? He has and is mending up the broken places and wounds in our lives. He has shown himself to be a keeper of promises. He said he would never leave us and he has never left us. He said he would supply all of our needs. And can anybody say he has supplied your every need. He said he's the good shepherd and he has been a good shepherd that has led us in green pastures. The next time you find yourself in a moment of grief, keep the light on in your spirit because I declare that you ought to look for God to reveal himself to be mighty in your life. Do I have some witnesses that can say that in my darkest moments, that's when God showed himself mighty and powerful and real in my life. Ah, he said that Isaiah was saying, you know what? I was in the temple and I saw God. He had been serving God all his life. He's not just anybody. He's a preacher. He's a, he's a, he's a priest. And now he sees God. He was caught up in mourning the king. And God is saying, you're caught up in the king. But now, in the midst of your mourning, you need to see me. And that's what God is saying to us, church. When problems come up on every hand and all we see is what we're dealing with, God is saying, lift up your eyes and see me. See me in a way that you've never seen before. See God in his majesty and splendor, and it will change your life. And I believe in this dispensation in the life of Bethel, in the dispensation in the life of your family, God is saying, I want you to see me like never before. Yes, we have racism, classism, and sexism, but God says, see me. Yes, there is spiritual wickedness in high places, and you're dealing with principalities and powers, but you can't win unless you see me. Yes, the bills are high and the resources seem low, but God says, don't look to that. Look and see me. Isaiah said, I didn't see God. Listen, listen. Oh, I feel my help. Isaiah said, I didn't see God on my level. He said, I saw God high and lifted up. Uh, this is a worship experience. And God wanted to, Isaiah to see him high and lifted up. And God wants us to see him high and lifted up. High above every principality and high power. High above every leader and army. You see, this is not a praise service. Praise is necessary, but praise is when we compliment God and we thank God for what we do, he's done. And we need praise, but Isaiah is experiencing worship. And in, and in worship, we're talking about the worth. Oh, my God. We're talking about the worth of God. And I was shouted from the housetops that our God is worthy. That is why when God chose to reveal himself to Isaiah, he showed himself as high and lifted up. And every moment of worship, every time you worship God, you ought to spend every moment to lift up the Savior high. That's why Jesus said, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. That when you lift him high in your spirit, God will begin to show himself mighty in your life. Is there 
anybody that can say I'm going through hell and high water, but God is high and lifted up. I don't care what you think about them. I don't care what you say about them, but in my life, God is high and lifted up. Lord, that's why, uh, Brother Wilson, I like when the male chorus used to sing that song, and they're going to sing it again in Bethel. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Oh, Lord. And then he said, I saw something. Oh, my eyes are filled with wonder. He, he said, when I saw him, he said, the king, he saw him on the throne and his, the train <laughs> of his robe literally filled the whole temple. The temple is not small. It's a big place. The train of his robe filled the temple. Most of us are familiar with the train of a royal robe. It's the back portion of the robe. And in many cases, it hangs down and sweeps across the floor. Come on, look at it now. Symbolizing majesty and honor. Uh, well, at the time of Isaiah's writing, I'm shouting before I even get a chance to say it. Uh, the king's robe had a train also. And the king's train was actually woo, made of uh, pieces or swashes uh, of the royal robes of defeated kings. The conquering king would have portions woo, of the defeated king's robe cut and sewn into his own robe as a symbol and testimony of the conqueror's strength and power. Isaiah mm, looked at the train on God's robe and there were so many conquests on his robe that he said it filled the temple, symbolizing that he had defeated every enemy. Oh, somebody ought to get excited. That ought to encourage you today, church, just knowing that your father Father has defeated every enemy that comes against you. Every trial, tribulation, situation, and sickness has already, oh, I wish I had some worshipers, has already been defeated. And whatever you're faced with today, just encourage yourself that has already been defeated. God has already conquered every foe that stands against you. The battle has already won, been won. Uh, just declare by faith uh, that his train uh, fills the temple. Uh, somebody ought to give God the glory. Uh, and church, the reality is that's not even the best part of the revelation. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 says that our body is the temple uh, of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and we ought to understand uh, that when we get saved, God fills us. Uh, and everywhere we go, uh, God goes with us. Uh, his victorious train uh, fills this temple. Uh, it fills your temple. Uh, and to the glory of God, uh, this, that means that everywhere... <laughs> that you go, you ought to acknowledge that his victorious train and majesty fills your temple. That's why Paul could say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When God is using you, don't you dare take no get the big head. It's not you, but his train that's filling your temple. Come on, give God a praise. And that's why on the day of Pentecost, Pentecost. Uh, it was not about uh, those personalities. Uh, it was about God coming down uh, and his train uh, filling the temple of all of those in the upper room. Uh, and when God filled them, uh, they had the power uh, to do something they could never do on their own. Uh, somebody ought to get up uh, and you ought to stop praising God uh, that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords lives on the inside of you uh, and his train uh, fills his temple. Can anybody say it's high and lifted up? That means that everything is beneath his feet. Can anybody thank God that everything is beneath his feet? That at the name of Jesus. Oh Lord help me. And he sees something else. Oh I feel God. Can't you see it? He says I saw something. It blew my mind. He said I saw angels everywhere. Six winged Angels, Oh, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. He said two of them, two of the wings covered their faces. And two of their wings covered the feet. And two of the wings uh, covered their eyes. Amen. 
And uh, what two of them were used for flying. Y'all pray with me now. And they were everywhere. They were here. And they were there. And they were there. And they were there. They were everywhere. And the angels were crying out, Holy! 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 Lord God of hosts, the whole earth is full of your glory. That everywhere that they were saying, Holy, holy. First it was the eyes they saw. Now they're hearing, he's hearing with his ears. Uh, and he's hearing uh, this heavenly and majestic uh, worship. Uh, when he's hearing it from every part, it's like you think you got Dolby stereophonic sound. And you think you got a hi-fi system. But can you imagine uh, angels from heaven uh, that are saying, holy, 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 holy. Heaven and earth is full of your glory. Holy, holy, holy. And that's what a worship service ought to be about that when we gather together God's name is lifted up and we don't have to lift him up at the same time and in the same way but you ought to admit you ought to lift up who he is and he's holy high and lifted up and his train fills the temple. You don't understand. What do you think that you're going to be doing in heaven? Don't you realize that John said, I was looking around the altar of God. And he said they got four and 20 elders. And all they do, this is their job 24 hours a day. And he said they're crying, holy Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth is full of your glory. It's not just in the temple, but when you see the rainbow, that's God's glory. When you see a peacock in all of his splendor, that's God's glory. When you see the magnificent blue sea, that's God's glory. Can anybody praise God that God's glory can be seen in all? Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. And then, so we got something for the eyes. This is a sensory overload, y'all. He said, I saw something with my eyes, and now my ears. Oh, I'm hearing something that no man has ever heard before. This is the sound of, this is the sound of heaven. And then he says, he says, uh, he said, when they spoke, he said, I could feel the foundation of the temple began to shake. Shake from the bottom up. As they spoke, the purse was shake, place was shaking like an earthquake. He, he, he's feeling, oh, this is a sensory overload I saw and I hear, but now I'm feeling. I feel the vibrations. And, and I got a question, church. I got a question. I want you to wake up now. I got a question. When was the last time you got shook up in worship? Uh, I'm not talking about shouting and praising. That's good. That's a place. But when God showed up in your life, because we're the temple now, when God showed up and shook you, when was the last time that you were shook up by God in worship? I don't know about you, but I... I want worship that will shake me up sometime. I want worship that won't leave me the same. I want worship that shakes me down to the core of my soul. I want worship that shakes up and out my wants and desires until God's desires are my desires. I want worship that shakes us up till we treat our neighbor right and shakes us until we obey our parents. I want God to speak so loudly that it shakes up some of the unrighteousness in our government. I want God to shake them in government until they stop passing discrimination voting practices. I want God to shake up the foundation of this government until people stop lying about a stolen election. And I want the Lord, if they don't respond to the shaking, then shake them right out of office so justice will flow forth like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Come on, can anybody say in a prayer, shake me Lord. Lord, shake me to a walk right. Shake me to an act right. Shake me to we repair relationships right. 
shake me. Shake me, Lord. Come on, give God a praise. I want to be shook for Jesus. Lord. This is a sensory overload. Reverend Shackelford, uh, uh, Reverend Anderson, this is a sensory overload. My eyes are seeing stuff ain't nobody ever saw before. My ears are hearing stuff that nobody ever heard before. I'm feeling stuff that nobody ever felt before. And now he's getting ready to see and smell something. He said, now I see and I smell smoke. The smoke, you know what? Anytime you see smoke in a movie, smoke, some actors, they have smoke on the stage, you know, the artists. Come on, y'all pray with me now. It gives a sense of mystery. But it also covers up that which is not important. The temple was beautiful. It was one of the seven wonders of the world. There's gold everywhere. There's wood everywhere. It was as elaborate as man could make it. Everybody would walk in the temple and say, this is absolutely awesome. Look at all the gold and the, the jewelry. And the Look at all of the wonder in this. But I, it was, but I pray that when you encounter God and when you see God, when you experience God, that you see spiritual smoke. That reality is that when you worship God, there ought to come a particular part of individual or corporate worship when the only thing that you see is God. There ought to be a point in the worship service that even if there are a thousand people around you, you ought to just hear the voice of God for yourself. It ought to be a place that no matter how great the looking of the church, it ought to be a time in the service where you don't see nothing but God high and lifted up and his train fills your temple. Isaiah has, God has Isaiah. Anybody know Isaiah? I mean, God has Isaiah's attention. He's got his attention. He's in the wondrous presence of God. And when he experienced God in all of his fullness and majesty, Isaiah looked at himself. King James said, I'm undone. I'm a sinful man. Uh, I ain't talking about what people see, because we can fool people. How many know you know you better than anybody else? A priest is well respected. Everybody looked at Isaiah and said, you're supposed to have the best moral compass. Everybody lifts him up in the community. People were looking at Isaiah and said, that's a holy man. But let me tell you something. When you have truly worshipped and seen God, you really see yourself. And Isaiah said, beyond all of the wonderful robes that I wear and all the titles that I have been given, that even though that, and I don't care what you think, he said, I'm not everything that I ought to be. Let me tell you something. Forget this fake worship. The one of the ways that you know someone is truly worshipped is when they see their faults and not always looking at everybody else's faults. How can we be judgmental when God is showing us our own faults? And I thought about to tell you, when God shows you yourself, it's very humbling. Because if the truth be told, we don't like everything that we see. Oh yeah, he'll show us ourselves. He'll show us our sins, impure motives, our faults, our jealousy, and our envy. We see our doubt and our unbelief. And Isaiah sees God in worship. This is what worship is all about. It ought to transform your life. You ought to let the world know what you see is not the real deed. Because God has exposed me. And in worship, you ought to be naked before God. God, you ought to take down your crowns and your titles and your degrees. All of us got some of it. But when you come before God, none of that means nothing. He says, hallelujah. Says, he says, he said, I got to admit it. You showed me myself. I've seen your holiness. And he said, I got unclean lips. He said, my mouth has been saying some stuff I know you ain't pleased with. And the truth be told, I'm going to finish this sermon. Most of us, when we sin, we, fight, we, we mess up because it's our mouth. 
Say amen. amen. We say stuff that shows the condition of our hearts. Because yeah. Jesus said, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. He said, everyone around him, I ain't by myself. He said, I got to speak from the whole nation. Everybody around me got a mouth condition feels hopeless and knows he is helpless to do anything about it. And then, ah, seraphim, that's a fiery angel from heaven. Ah, I like this. He, he saw the man, he's hopeless. How many know that if, you try, that if you try to get yourself right, it's hopeless? I don't care how awesome you think you are. You try to get yourself right and you stand before a holy God. I dare you are the biggest fool in the world if you stand before God and start talking about how good you are. Start talking about what you did and how, and how you helped folks. No, when you stand before God, God will say that all of your righteousness, just like a filthy rag, get yourself together. And when God shows us ourselves, it's not to condemn us. It is to move us to the point where he can transform us. God knew he couldn't help himself. He, he sees his condition. He won't leave him there. God told me to tell you, no matter where you find yourself, he won't leave you there. Angel went up to the altar. You know, the altar is where the sacrifices are. Took a hot coal off the altar put it on his lips. Now check this out. I want you to think if you were there. Normally, Sister Yolanda, if somebody were coming to you with a burning coal, <laughs> and you know it's hot, you saw it come off the and it's and it's, he, he's coming at you, and he's going to put it on your lips. You know, normally you'd run because you're feeling that this thing going to kill me. But this is different because Isaiah, the angel is coming. He's, he's coming. He's coming. He doesn't know what God is getting ready to do, but he trusts God. I don't know what you're doing, but I know you wouldn't have me to see you in all of your wonder, in all of your splendor, and try to destroy me. He said, Lord, whatever you're doing, I trust you to do what's right. And God wanted me to ask you, will you trust him? And he shows you yourself and uses whatever he needs to use to fix your life. And I'm putting myself in there. I'm not putting myself above you. We tried to fix ourselves, and it didn't work. And God is saying, Bethel, in the day of Pentecost, as we celebrate the Holy Spirit, God is saying, trust me. True worship is not fun and games. True worship is transformational. You cannot truly see God in worship and still act ugly. Yeah. You experience them all right, but it's not true worship unless you have changed. That's why some people won't get saved because they see people come home from church and they say, we had a good time of worship, and then they cuss everybody out. Y'all don't have to like me in here. There ought to come a time that he said, I'm undone. And then he said, he just got quiet and didn't say nothing. And there ought to come a time in worship where you just be quiet. Say, Lord, I'm here. Do what you got to do. And then the angel said these words. The angel looks at him. He's messed up. Touches his lip with the coal. He trusts him. He doesn't know. He didn't know, but he trusted him. It didn't burn him, but something has happened. In worship, sometimes you can't explain it, but something has happened. Sometimes you leave the worship service individually by yourself, or you leave it corporately. And so you can't even explain what God has done. Anybody ever had that kind of worship experience? You don't understand, but you know God has done something. But he made it clear. He said, this touched your lips. And now your guilt is gone. And your sins are forgiven. He said, I put something on your life that has burned away 
uh, the sin and iniquity and the desire to do the wrong stuff. He, he said, I burned away the guilt and the shame because I need you to serve me. And I don't need you to be bound with guilt and shame. And God told me to tell you, Isaiah, that your sins are forgiven. And God told me to tell you, Bethel, that when you trust God to put something on your life, like the burning coals from the altar of heaven, God wants to let you know that once he's forgiven you, you are forgiven you. You are forgiven. That once he has blessed you, you are blessed. The devil doesn't have nothing to do with it. Is there anybody that can say, thank you, God, that you've touched my life. I'm not here because I'm so great. I'm here because you touched me. And now I'm never the same. God said, I took care of it. Bethel, he took care of it. It's gone. You ought to just say to yourself, it's gone. Come on, let's say it. It's gone. He wiped the slate clean now. Now go knowing that you're right with me. And church, you hear Reverend Shackelford always say, Lord, have your way. That's what worship is all about. Not having what you want, but having what God wants. Lord, have your way. <laughs> Let him touch you right where you are. You're not in this worship service, but God said, I want to touch you and purge everything that's not pleasing in his sight. Unless you think that this experience is only for Isaiah and that this life-changing experience is only for him, it was God who saw us in a state of hopelessness like Isaiah. And God gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, and let him be sacrificed on an altar of a bloody cross. And that same blood has touched us and purges us and cleanses us from all our sins. Thank you, Lord, for applying the blood just like you applied the coal on Isaiah. You've applied the blood over our lives, and now we're no longer the same. And that's why we can say, at the cross, the cross where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. And then... How you know Isaiah's messed up now, isn't he? You know, so worship ought to mess you up sometime. And I mean mess you up in a good way. Isaiah experienced all of that. Have you ever had a worship service and you don't feel like talking to nobody? Come on, sometime, don't tell, sometime after a good worship, I'm talking about when you're focused on God. Sometimes you need to hurry up and go to your car. Don't do a whole lot of talking. Come on, y'all Y'all know what I'm talking about. Because sometimes you hear these extra voices. God, you know, you forget what God has shown you. Sometimes you just need to hear from God. And now that God has fixed them, you know what he said? He, he says, I need somebody. Woo! He says, who is going to go for us? This is Trinity Sunday. Father, <laughs> Son. And Holy Spirit. This is Trinity Sunday. I'm going to say it again. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm going to say it again. This is Trinity Sunday. Father, who's going to go for us? Son, and Holy Spirit. This, who's going to go for us? We're saying it on one accord. Isaiah said, after God fixed him, Lord, send me. Let me tell you something. When you have truly worshipped and experienced God, it ought to make you want to do more for him. Isaiah was already serving God. But God was calling him. And he's calling some of you to a greater. Who am I talking to? He's calling some of you to a greater level of service. Georgette, you hear me? You said God is elevating you. You're not the only one. He's elevating us. You think we went through all of this Bethel so that we can just pat ourselves on the back and sit in the chair of satisfaction and to sit on our blessed assurance and amazing grace. No, God is calling us to a higher level of service. When you've experienced God, it should make you want to say, Lord, if you need somebody, send me. Reverend, look, God, I don't have all the gifts and talents. I look, I don't have what she got. God's not concerned with that. 
He just said, just come just as you are. I need somebody what that's willing. I'm so grateful to have experienced you in my life, God. How could I say no to a God that's been so good? Bethel, God is calling us to a higher level. And he's saying, in the midst of all of this, you've seen me. You've experienced. God has said, who's going who's to go for us in our community? Are you looking for somebody else? God said, I need you. In your family, you're looking for somebody else to evangelize your family? No, God has said, I'm sending you. In our church, are you looking for somebody else? You come to church, you don't ever do nothing, don't join no organization, ain't never done nothing since you've been here. God has said, I'm calling you. And one thing that I like about it, he doesn't make Isaiah go. Because he could do that. I don't want draftees. I want somebody that has experienced me and knows my wonder, knows my power. I want you to go willingly. God shouldn't have to beg you to praise him. He shouldn't have to beg you to worship him. Lord knows he should not have to beg you to serve him. I stopped by here to tell you today, thank God. Because God is speaking to us individually and collectively. He wants us to see him like never, ever before. And our song today, we exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you, O Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Early, <laughs> yeah, I know it's about 10 o'clock. Early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. Holy means he's separate unto himself. There's nobody, there's nobody like him in all the earth. I pray God would show you something in your life that you would experience him in such a way that he will make you fit for his use. I pray God blow your mind just like he did Isaiah and reveal himself. Some of you are going through trials, you're going through tribulations and you're feeling sorry for yourself, but God says, I'm right there. I want to reveal myself to you. I want to show myself mighty in your life. And God said, I want to use you even in the midst of your trials. God said, I need you. I need you in this hour that we live in. Let me tell you something. God is really calling him to service. But the first call that everybody ought to have is you have to have a call to salvation. You ought to want to say, Lord, Lord, I want to be right. I don't want to just put my name on the church roll. I want to be saved. I ain't chucking. I ain't jiving. I want to be right before you. Because I want to serve you, but I don't want to be, I don't want to be fake and phony. I want to be real. You can be real today. Because Prophetically, as God, with that sermon was weighing heavily on my heart this week, he said there's some people who are waiting. What are you waiting for? God has already shown you. He's shown you that he wants your life to mean something special for time and eternity. If you pray this prayer with me on today, God's going to use you in ways that you never dared dream. Yeah, you may have money, but if you don't have Jesus, you're broke. You may have a title and prestige, but if you don't have Jesus, then you're really nobody. Let me tell you something. Pray this prayer with me. This is the first call. God is calling you. He wants to save your soul. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you. I see you high and lifted up, and your train fills this temple. Please forgive me of all my sins, by thought, by word, and by deed. I believe that you died on an altar of a cross to save my soul. And I confess you as the Lord of my life. Have your way in my life, and I'll serve you. Everything that I am and everything that I'm not. If you're looking for somebody 
here I am. Send me. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or maybe you rededicated yourself, you know what God wants you to do? He said, I want you to get hooked up. Don't be out there by yourself. I'd like, I'd like for you to just let me know that you prayed that prayer. Here's all you do. Here's all you do. I want you to email me, to join Christ Bethel at gmail.com. The number two, join Christ Bethel at gmail.com. Send me an email. I'll personally get it. I got that email on my phone. Amen. As soon as you do it, it'll show up. And I want to welcome you to the body of Christ. You can also call the church. Amen. Who's going to answer? I'm going to answer. Amen. And I'll greet you with the love of the Lord. No condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And I'm going to tell you something, too, as well. If you're looking for a church home, come on, join with us. You've been checking this out. You can be all over this world. You can join this church. I just want to say, here I am. I want to be a part of a place that's doing something, that's ministering to the community. Here we are, Lord, sending us. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this message in the life of Isaiah. But, Lord, that really is what we've experienced. Lord, we offer ourselves in service to you. From the youngest of us to the most senior. Here we are, Lord. If you need somebody, here I am. If you need somebody to sing, if you need somebody to serve the homeless, if you need somebody to spread your word, if you need somebody to worship you, if you need somebody to cheer the fallen, here we are. Send us. And so, Lord, we pray. Bless Reverend McCormick as she recuperates from surgery. Continue to knit Georgette Chapman back together again. Continue to bless all of our sh uh, sick and shut in this, Al Holmes and Donna Outen and Maxine Langhorn and many others that we know. The bereaved families. Uh, pray for the Watts family. Pray for the Smith family. We pray for the Williams family. Lord, in the name of Jesus, have your way. We thank you, Lord. We are forever changed. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. Why don't you just wave your hands for just a few minutes? We exalt. We exalt thee. Come on. Praise him. Oh, oh, Lord. Come on, wherever you are, let heaven hear you. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. I see your high lifted up. We exalt thee. Oh, the glory fills this place. We exalt thee. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Come on, we're going up higher. We're going up higher. Come on, I've got to worship him. We exalt thee. Hallelujah. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. We exalt thee. We Every power, every stronghold, 
Africa, Dominion. wave those hands. No, we're not finished yet. No, we're not finished yet. Heaven and earth is full of your glory. Heaven and earth is full of your glory. Oh, in the last days, you're going to pour out your spirit on all flesh. Oh, we're your flesh. Pour out your spirit. We can't do anything without you. Oh, pour yourself out. Glory. We exalt him. Amen. As we lift up our doxology, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. is a spirit and those that worship him shall worship him in spirit and in truth may the grace of our once dead and risen Savior Jesus Christ the love of Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule in the Bible with all of us now and forever let the redeemed of the Lord say amen amen and amen now cry out holy 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 lord god of hosts let us train fill your temple have a magnificent week come on by the church till 12 we're gonna pray for you amen thank you jesus